Okay, so a, a big thank you to Yong Wan Ha for um, stepping in and giving his talk early. Um, so um, let's 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 welcome him, and um, we're we're looking forward to hearing about magic state distillation protocols. Thanks very much, Yong Wan. Sure. Uh, so I have forty-five minutes, right? Forty-five minutes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, thanks. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to talk about magic state, distillation, magic state distillation protocol. And it is in plural, which means I will discuss several of them. Uh, actually, it's a, it's going to be a soup of ideas. So uh, uh, I will try to deliver the core math uh, idea of each of them, not to go in, into too much into detail about specific examples. So let's start with uh, uh, some background. Uh, I believe all of you are very familiar with it, but it's always good to review it. So what's T-state? T-state is uh, just a w one single state uh, noted here. There, it can be some Clifford deformation of this one, but uh, this, is most, this is the one that is discussed most often. And, uh, and a T-gate is this one. Uh, they are interchangeable in the sense that if you can prepare uh, X, uh, pointing x direction eigenstate, then you can just apply this t gate to obtain t state. And if you are given with a t state, then you can uh, implement t gate in this fashion. You you are provided with the arbitrary unknown state, and you are inject certain t state, and then you apply c naught, uh, and then you measure. And based on the measurement outcome, you Clifford correct the outcome. And the net effect is to implement T-gate. Uh, there, uh, there are other T-gates, which I will mention later. There, there, <coughs> there is a CCZ gate, uh, sorry, CCD state, which can be injected in a similar fashion uh, to, in order to implement CCZ gate. Um, yeah. And the big advantage of this idea is that only you have to do Clifford operation in real time when you're doing computation. And the preparation of this magic state, the T state, or the uh, CCD state can be done offline. So you try several times until you get some high fidelity one. And then you make a bunch of them and later use it. And uh, the one architecture, uh, in an architecture where you are producing this T uh, state, uh, in contrast to the previous talk, uh, you t just take a enough resource to uh, improve the fidelity of this, of this T state. And here, the enough resource in some estimate is estimated to be almost everything. So it is crucial to improve the efficiency of this part, the Im improvements of the uh, magic state, and that's, that's the distillation. There has been, generally speaking, two schemes for distillation. Uh, first one is not, a, not necessarily the historically first one, but uh, most often talked about uh, is to make a good one out of bad ones. Uh, uh, first noted by uh, uh, Bravi and Kitaev in 2004, and later slightly improvements we have obtained, uh, I will mention later. And there is a relatively unknown, uh, less well-known uh, scheme due to Kneel and others. Uh, this one performs equally well with the uh, previous one, and sometimes uh, better in, in certain regime. And let me just first explain uh, two ideas. Let me explain two ideas in, sequ in sequence, um, <coughs> and, and, and and have you to have a, 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 a mathematical intuition about those. Uh, there are other uh, distillation schemes whose success probability is not. Uh, one, even if you inject perfect T1s, and I will not talk about those protocols. Uh, so, oh, how do we make a good one out of bad ones? So, here's a, you know, we, we just repeat the, uh, uh, the, the basic principle of fault tolerance, fault tolerance. You just repeat redundantly, and then you uh, look for errors. Um, so, in a, in a protocol by Bravian Kitaev, you prepare a uh, logical uh, plus eigenstate, uh, logical, I <laughs> logical eigenstate of the uh, logical operator X, and then you apply transversal T and look for error. If there's an error you found, then start over. 
If there's no error you found, then convert the logical state into a, a single qubit state. That will be your distilled magic state. It doesn't work for any uh, starting encoded states, but it has to be in a certain form, and that is the, uh, the encoded state must come from a stabilizer code where the X stabilizer has a weight multiple of eight. Uh, that's a special symmetry, and that's why I drew this fractal diagram, which has a special symmetry into it. And uh, this is not that common. Uh, we have seen how to, uh, to construct a triply even code from um, uh, some, by some recursive procedure. Uh, but uh, beyond that, we don't know really how to construct, in general, how to construct this uh, triply even code. Uh, the general criteria for this is not the uh, uh, triply even. Um, uh, you can think of a binary matrix, and uh, you can associate uh, CSS code to the binary matrix by calling, say, this first row to be the logical operators and the rest to be a stabilizers. And the conditions for the stabilizers is that each row must be mod 8, each mo row, and that a pair of them should overlap in multiple of 4, and a triple of them should overlap in even number of places. And in fact, you can relax all these conditions to, just to hold modulo 2, not modulo 8 or 4. Uh, the price you have to pay is in this relaxed condition is that you have to apply certain Clifford correction after your transversal T. And, but, but since uh, in the distillation protocol, it is easier, well, it is often discussed uh, not caring about the Clifford cost. So uh, this is going to be a valid uh, distillation protocol. And that is called triorthogonality. And given such a triorthogonal code, what you do typically do is you just concatenate. You prepare several bad states, and then you, you run your factory once, and then produce uh, one state out of each. And then you collect them, and you put into a bigger uh, machine, and you produce one T out. Uh, as you can see, the le as you increase the level of concatenation, the, the space requirements or the runtime grows exponentially, so it is prohibitable to concatenate, concatenate too many times. That's for how to make a good one out of bad ones, and what about check if it's good? Uh, when you want to prepare a state in the desired direction, uh, it is easy if you can measure it along that direction. The simplest case is that when you want to make a uh, the zero logical state, if you can measure the sigma z operator, then you just measure it. If it, if it gives you a plus a minus one, then you just uh, flip it. Otherwise, you just keep it. And that's the simplest way to create the uh, high fidelity uh, logical state. But what's, what about the magic state? Magic state is a, uh, in some basis, uh, in some, I, I mean, up to Clifford uh, uh, conjugations, Magic state is an eigenstate of a Hadamard, a Clifford operator, not a poly operator. So you have to be able to measure along that, uh, in that basis of the Clifford operator. And you will have, uh, you, and then you, you will be able to obtain a magic state. But how to measure in the Hadamard basis, which is non-trivial, if you are only provided with a machine that can measure poly basis, well, you can, do, you can implement the measurement along the uh, uh, Hadamard by if you had uh, uh, a T state already. So I want to prepare a T state. To do that, I, I want to measure along a Hadamard. And to do that, I need a T state again. So it, it looks like a, 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 a self loop that doesn't, make, that, that doesn't produce anything. But the trick is that you can implement the check routine in some error correcting code. And that's the beauty of this. Uh, so Neil, actually, like two months before Bradby Kentai paper, uh, he, he, uh, he wrote a really short paragraph how to do it. Uh, so prepare a weakly self-dual code, weakly self-dual CSS, meaning that it, it is a CSS code with the uh, uh, Hadamard is transversal with a just single encoded qubit. Uh, the simplest example is the seven qubit steam code. And you can also think of a 2D color code with uh, one encoded qubit. Uh, well, in the previous talk, we heard that there is a, uh, some 2D color code is doubly even and some are not, but it turns out that you can use any of them. Uh, 
I'll mention, I'll come to that, I think, later. Um, and later, uh, by the previous speaker, Cody Jones, we discovered a so-called H code, which is very high rate uh, of distance two. And, and then, and what he, he used this code to check the eigen uh, product of eigen, uh, uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> eigenvalue of product of Hadamard's along a many qubits, and then you, you check the magic state in a clever way to produce the better ones. Um, and for some code, transfers a Hadamard becomes logical swap instead of a, a, a logical Hadamard. Uh, the smallest example is the, the four qubit code where the stabilizers are four uh, X or four Z. Uh, in that case, uh, you have to use another trick. So how does, the, how does this uh, idea work? Uh, let's give you, let me give you the concrete example of Steen code. Uh, what you do is you encode no easy a magic state into your code space. And then you apply this uh, transversal gate, but TXT becomes the Hadamard. Uh, well, not, not exactly Hadamard, but Clifford equivalent to that. And you measure that. So this enacts in the logical space uh, uh, Hadamard. So you are reading the eigenvalue of the Hadamard in this way. Now, the T gates are fully inside the error correcting code. So whatever error occurs, you are given one more chance to detect them. And upon successful outcome, where you, where you did not see any error, then the uh, output, log well, the logical state is in a better uh, magic state. So more generally, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just recapping what I said. You want to measure the eigenvalue of the Hadamard. Post select on plus one. And uh, this circuit guaranteed to give you a wrong answer with a certain probability that doesn't scale with the code distance of your choice. So it has uh, some probability that uh, to be wrong. And it also, has a, it also corrupts your original state with a much smaller probability, but non-zero. That is, depends on the code distance of your choice. So in a, uh, a quantum channel notation, I, would ca I can write this way. The rho is your input state. Uh, pi plus is the projection onto the plus one eigenstate of a uh, Hadamard. And minus is the mi minus one eigenstate. So uh, this is what I wanted. This is inherently faulty uh, wrong outcome. And this is the uh, uh, contamination from the error correcting code. Uh, this can be made arbitrarily small by increasing the code distance. This is intrinsic, so you have to repeat your measurement to increase your fidelity to your uh, measurement outcome. Okay, so what's new about this scheme? Uh, let me give you the, our contribution. Um, so uh, we have seen some several error correcting codes that admit uh, transverse ahead of our and then, and then it becomes logical Hadamard. But it turns out that you can use any you know, weekly self-dual CSS code. Uh, that enlarges your choice of uh, error correcting codes to a very large set. And uh, that extra ingredient is that you have to specify which qubits to test. And that is uh, essentially you are uh, 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 prescribing a classical error correcting code uh, I mean, classical parity check matrix, that is a more precise statement. And this uh, uh, classical parity check matrix should satisfy a certain, uh, we call it sensitivity requirement, due to the fact that our check routine makes an error with the probability p squared, no matter how large code distance you choose. So <clears throat> we want to uh, be able to detect the uh, uh, wrong answer uh, so in general, uh, uh, the picture for this distillation scheme is that instead of con concatenation, you would just test it until we are satisfied. You would just filter it many times. Uh, so let me go through the first idea. Why can we use any uh, weekly self-tool CSS code into uh, 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 Hadamard measurement routine? So let me start with a self-orthogonal binary subspace of my binary uh, uh, bit strings vector space. And that, it, that will define my CSS code by calling each uh, uh, vector in this several thousand subspace to be my 
X stabilizer and uh, Z stabilizer. So number of encoded qubits will be the number of total physical qubits minus the stabilizer dimension. So the stabilized dimension is the two times of dimension of the self-orthogonal space. So K equals N minus two S. And the inner product in the usual sense in, when you're dealing with the binary vector space in this dual space <coughs> is going to define your commutation relation among the logical operators. So S perp is going to be the uh, if you think of S here, the first S as a X stabilizer state, X, X stabilizer space, then the X orthogonal complement is going to be the Z logical operator space, modulo Z stabilizers. So due to the self orthogonality, here is a, I'm mixing two things, but that's it. And the inner product in this quotient space is always symmetric. And you can actually classify the symmetric forms over the binary field. And there are only two choices. Uh, one is I call normal, and the other is I call hyperbolic, uh, where you can bring the, uh, the matrix representation of your inner product into a completely diagonal, diagonal form or block diagonal form. Uh, the proof is just a, another application of Gram-Schmidt process. And in the first case, the transverse Hadamard becomes logical Hadamard. Uh, by choosing logical operators in this way, you just call my X logical operator is, is associated with the, with the first, bad magic, first basis element, and the Z uh, logical operator is, is also um, uh, associated with the first basis element, but with the X or Z uh, uh, product of poly matrices. The commutation relation is guaranteed by this uh, orthogonal uh, inner, inner product form. In the hyperbolic case, you can choose this form where, so, under the Hadamard, the X and Z are exchanged, so they induce the, just a swap of logical operators. So logical Hadamard becomes some, uh, transverse Hadamard becomes some Clifford operation, and we can tune in the normal case to be a logical product of all logical Hadamards. And what about the outer code? The reason I introduced the outer code is due to the second term, which is intrinsic in, the, in this uh, measurement routine. Uh, so here's a simple example of a cyclic code. So in the normal cyclic code, you would just check the pair, a, pair, a parity of pairs, and uh, if there's a four bits, then you need a three checks. But I demand that I should check the fourth one, which is redundant in the point of view of parity check matrix, but is ne necessary in point of view to eliminate this factor. So if I didn't have this one, then the first one might have been faulty, which is solely depends on the measurement outcome of from, from this, uh, say this, uh, just one check, which can be wrong by order uh, p squared, but I want order p, q, p to the fourth uh, uh, accuracy. So in order to do that, I need two uh, checks, and for that purpose, I, I inserted the fourth check. So, Outer code is not just a code of, in the classical sense, but it's really a parity check matrix to guarantee your uh, redundancy to eliminate the second uh, uh, factor. Uh, yeah, uh, just to summarize what I just said. Uh, the, in, in equation, the, uh, the parity check matrix of an outer code should satisfy this e equality. Uh, two is from this two. Uh, so either the input error has a sufficiently large weight or the measurement outcome should reveal that. So using this idea, you can just combine uh, several uh, 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 weakly self to a normal codes and uh, a combination of outer codes. And in some limit, you can obtain the following. Um, so if you use the weakly self dual codes of encoding rate near one, there's a, a lot of them, Actually, any random uh, self, uh, weakly self-dual code satisfy that. Uh, and you chose the outer codes by a large girth tenor graph. Um, then, roughly speaking, you only need D magic state to achieve the dth order error reduction. Uh, I'm omitting the prefactor, which is, which is going to be huge, but for, for, for this purpose of this sentence, that suffice. The, the formal theorem is like this. For any odd number D, uh, uh, and uh, any real number uh, uh, delta, there exists a protocol such that for all sufficiently small input error rates, it consumes only d plus 
slightly more than D, T is per output on average, producing magic state of error rate P to the D. So uh, asymptotically, this is the one of the best. Uh, uh, the pre pre prior art is due to John's where uh, it was, D was restricted to be a power of two, and it was not just D, but D, it was D plus one. So we removed the plus one, and we enlarged the scope of the distance part. And you can uh, think of the second uh, code limit where you, you use a good uh, inner codes, meaning that the uh, number, of, number of physical qubits and the number of encoded qubits is both proportional to the code distance. And you just randomly chose what qubits to check. And then uh, the theorem says that for any uh, distance, there is this protocol that uh, it operates only over uh, order of d qubits, uh, no larger, and it consumes order d squared t gates and produces d t states with the error rate p to d. So, um, so using this uh, uh, protocol, asymptotically for small enough error rates, you, your overhead for a t, t state distillation uh, in terms of input t counts is going to be linear in log up to log log correct correction. So this is a, uh, this is a <coughs> one of the <coughs> prior art uh, uh, table, ignoring all the Clifford costs uh, uh, using a triorthogonal code of, of, of Brian and myself in 2012 and using some other uh, Meyer Easton Kneel uh, protocol. Uh, there, the tar at, at, as a function of target marginal error rate, the number of T, t gates you, that you have to consume is like this one. And in comparison, our new protocol would have a number like this. Uh, say, if you choose, say, a 10 to the minus 13, then it fits somewhere around here. So. Uh, there is a, some improvement. Uh, and the space cost is not that large. Actually, this is the, one of the main advantages of our pr approach, where you don't really consume too large space. Uh, this is the number of output t states, and the total protocol can be run on a, at most four times as the number of output t states. And in general, you can uh, measure any uh, uh, magic state in the third level. Uh, so to be more specific, I, I think of an m qubit uh, state prepared by applying certain uh, gates in the third level of Clifford hierarchy to the encoded uh, plus state. Uh, the stabilizers of this state is of this form by obvious math. You just conjugate the stabilizers of the uh, plus state by the U. And uh, it can be measured on basically any uh, uh, normal weekly self-dual CSS codes by the same trick. Uh, for example, if you're measuring CCZ, then the stabilizer is, is of the uh, C, uh, control Z times uh, sigma X, which, is, which can be implemented transversely on CSS code on uh, weekly self to CSS code. So you prepare M copies of, the, of such codes. And you implement and you replace uh, the previous T gate with U here. Uh, then automatically you are measuring the stabilizers of, of this state simultaneously. And the same trick can be, uh, 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 can be done with the, playing with the outer codes. And uh, uh, at, as, as an example, at the quartic uh, order of error reduction, you can just consume 14 T gates instead of 32 previously uh, to output one CCZ state. Okay, let me skip this one. Uh, and uh, let me switch gears to, to come to the uh, 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 the old one, using the how to make a good uh, magic state out of bad ones. And here we make some observations uh, 
to how to make a better trial orthogonal codes. So here are the core main, main ideas. Uh, you can simply puncture uh, the triathlon space, uh, and then you will obtain a triathlon code for uh, 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 T, T gates. And here's another trick to uh, reduce the space cost of your protocol. Uh, if, you're, if you're using uh, n qubit uh, uh, triorthogonal code, then you will need n qubit by the prior art. But here we only use number of encoded qubits plus number of stabilizers of x type, not the entire n qubits, at the cost of increasing depth. So if your uh, machine is very qubit, qubit limited, then this trick may be very useful. So in particular, if you're using 15 to 1 protocol, then you don't need a 15 qubits, you, don't, you only need 5 qubits. Um, and uh, another math idea is that you can actually randomize the uh, finding of triorthogonal matrices, and that will give as good as you can from the previous one. Uh, and another idea is that actually the two classes of protocols were the same, roughly speaking, uh, meaning that uh, any protocol that I mentioned in the first part with the deterministic syndrome, uh, which is the case for the normal weakly self dual CSS codes, then you can turn that protocol into a single code. Um, so that transformation is very closely related to the, the dou doubling transformation that we heard before in the previous talk, and that corresponds to the case where the number of encoded qubits is just one, and this is more general case. Um, and this explains why the Manny-Kneels uh, protocol and Bravikitaev had the same uh, coefficient in front of the output error rate. Uh, not only the first one, but the entire error polynomial is exactly the same, because they are the same. And uh, uh, the trial orthogonal code that is reported in the paper with Sergey uh, and me is, is actually a result of turning this the transformation from the Cody Jones H codes, the check-based one. Um, so we are uh, seeing some, some unification of protocols. I will not have the talk, time to talk about these ones, but let me focus on that one, because that one really gives a good examples. Uh, so what do we mean by puncturing triorthogonal space? So in the first space, what's a triorthogonal space? Uh, it's a binary vector space with a nonlinear constraint that if you give me three vectors, then I overlap them component-wise and I check the parity, then it's, it's always even. That's my trial orthogonality. Uh, the name is natural. It's orthogonal would mean that if, I, if you give me two vectors, then the overlap must, take, must be an even number. And trial orthogonal means that if you give me three, then it becomes an even number overlap. It's a nonlinear constraint. And puncturing is to forget. Uh, but I want to forget so that I can remember back. Uh, how do I do that? Uh, it's a space. It's a linear space. So I can always choose a linear basis, whatever I want. And in, the, uh, in, in this case, I want to do a, a, a Gauss elimination on the, uh, on, on the coordinates I want to puncture. So. Uh, just write down any basis for your triorthogonal space, and then bring the columns that you want to puncture to the front and run the Gauss elimination, that, and that will give you the matrix in this form. The, there are identity matrix on the top left and the, all the others. And I will call this part X logical and that part X stabilizer by removing the first two. Well, it's a, uh, if you're familiar with the triorthogonal uh, uh, matrices before, then you will immediately see that this part is a subspace of triorthogonal space. So it by itself a triorthogonal, and it has naturally even weight. And the upper row, upper two rows, since I have removed just one single one, it will have odd weight, but the overlapping property will be preserved. And this is a uh, reversibly forgetting because if you give me this star part, then I figure out where the odd, odd weight rows are, and I just attach identity matrix in, in front, and I declare that, oh, this space is the previous one of the permutation of columns, which is true. 
So this is my puncturing. Uh, actually, this is the, one of the oldest idea. In the, if you read the Bravikitai paper, they actually puncture read Merlot code once. But here, observation is that you can puncture many times. How many times? Uh, well, before I go into that, let me remind you what the uh, read Merlot code is, because this is a good, good family of codes that gives you uh, pretty good, uh, pretty good triorthogonal subspace. So read Merlot code. In, yeah, now nothing is quantum. Uh, just read Merlot code just, uh, is a is a, a, a set of all polynomial functions in n variables of certain degree. Uh, for example, if I, if you give me the product of two uh, variables x1 and x3 on this uh, domain, then if you express this function as a list of function values across all two to the m uh, inputs, then it has a weight two to the m minus two. Two is the degree of this polynomial. Why is that? Uh, support of the support where the function does not vanish must have x1 equal to one, x3 equal to one, and you are free to choose the remaining m minus two variables. And there are two to the m minus two uh, such choices. So you get weight immediately that. Um, and, well, often it's use, useful to think of a hypercubic uh, uh, n-dimensional unique cube in the n-dimensional space, and then you think of a function assigned on that cube, or labeling on that cube. And it turns out that if you choose m to be, a, a m to be larger than the three times of r, and three times of the degree, then it's always triply uh, even. Your code word is always uh, has weight uh, divisible by eight. And in particular, this is trying to the space. Uh, yeah, like I said before, previously only one puncture was considered. Now we consider many punctures. Um, uh, yeah. And here are some results of experiments, numerical experiments. Um, we find several hundred qubits. Uh, the inverse rate is around 10, sometimes yeah, sometimes very close to the code distance. And the coefficient, meaning the number of Z logical operators that is relevant in the distillation protocol, but because it determines the leading term of the error polynomial, is pretty small compared to the encoding rate. Um, the previously the best, I mean, uh, pre, uh, prior to our paper, the, uh, the best distance five code was like 49 to one. Now it's like a little less than seven. Uh, so if you can hit uh, the input error rate around 10 to the minus three, then one of the codes will do all your job. Say you can use, say this code, the success probability is around 40%, so you can run like twice. And uh, at the input error rate 10 to the minus three, then, you're, then you obtain like 10 to the minus 17. And another surprise, you can puncture a lot of times to even get sub-logarithmic overhead in the distillation. So this is, uh, this is falsifying the previous conjecture that uh, uh, input t count must be at least log in the uh, inverse, uh, inverse error rate. But yeah, we are false by providing an example. Uh, <clears throat> so again, a read Miller code. Uh, Puncture the coordinate. So remember that read Merlot code is a, a, a set of functions defined on the hypercube. And the hypercube can be, each point in the hypercube can be labeled by a bit string of m, length m. So, and I want to puncture the coordinates whose weight is less than some fixed number w. We will tune this uh, weight uh, parameter. And the result is that you, you will obtain a, a triorthogonal code of these parameters. Uh, the number of encoded qubits is the number of ways to choose at least uh, w plus one elements out of m elements, the combinatorial factor, and the notation should be self-explanatory. Um, and for this smallest uh, choice of parameters, you get the uh, good old one. Um, and if you tune a w to be around uh, one quarter of m, and you take a large R limit, then the <clears throat> this particular value approaches something like 0 0.678. Uh, 
uh, and the, the uh, overhead of your distillation is going to be given by log to the gamma, and the gamma value is like that. So uh, there, there have been uh, three, at least three different, slightly different constructions to achieve gamma equals one. And it was therefore conceivable that gamma equals one is the best possible value, but it turns out, turns out not, turns not to be the case. Uh, <laughs> here's the funny part. The smallest instance where the gamma is smaller than one is a little, a little less than 300 quadrillion qubits. So it's very practical uh, <laughs> uh, because the code distance is like 21,000, so at one shot, you're yeah, guaranteed to be good. Um, so this is a very impractically important example. Uh, um, probably we have to think about distillation once again. Uh, because this value doesn't seem to be very natural value, so it must be, there must be another family that can even lower that. Uh, and uh, this is a separate trick, uh, completely different from the pre previous ones. Um, now, in a distillation protocol, you assume only Z errors. Why is that a valid assumption? Because you will only left with the Z errors after you are, have injected your uh, T state. Even if, you had, even if you had a T state that suffers from uh, general de uh, 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 depolarizing noise, uh, it, after you inject, all the other components is shaved off and you are left with the only Z error component. Uh, and the typical protocol proceeds like this. You prepare uh, bare qubits in the plus states and zero states, and you apply a bunch of CNOTs. And then you apply T, and then you uh, inverse those encoding circuit, and then you project onto the initial state. So this will correspond to the sigma Z stabilizer, this three would co correspond to sigma x stabilizer, and you look for error. So if you have an error in the, say, on, along that positions, then that will propagate to your stabilizer measurement in that way. And if you measure this qubits in the sigma x direction, then you will detect those errors. Now, what we are doing here, we are doing, we are, we're, the overall circuit, the C naught T and inverse is like this. So there could be a T, well, ideally we, we would have T, but occasionally we have ZT because we have Z errors. And well, obviously I can decompose into the product of individual ones. Of course, this is not a very efficient de uh, decomposition, I, I should say, because y here you, you did it at all at once, but I'm, I'm now doing all individually. So depth is increased by a factor of N, which is huge. But What's this? T is an uh, exponential of poly Z with a, a pi over a, 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 a non Clifford angle. So after the conjugation by C naught, it's going to be exponential of some product of, sig product of sigma Zs. But action of the, that exponential of uh, product of sigma Z on these zero qubits does nothing. It's an eigenstate. So why don't we remove those qubits? So the key, key is that I want to, I want to just emulate uh, the action of this operator on this state by discarding these unused ones. I mean, unused, in other words, uh, that, are, that, are rem that remains constant along this, along the, uh, along this product. So uh, I would have to modify my C naught and then I apply just C, and then inverse. That will implement single uh, uh, factor here. And then you continue. And you are done. And the uh, air propagation will be identical because Z and T are both some exponential of product of sigma Zs. Um, and the whole implementation is done on Number of, number of logical qubits plus number of X stabilizers, and no more. So we basically removed all the sigma Z, uh, 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 yeah, part. So I, yeah, I, I, it's time for me to conclude. 
So, yeah, we only have talked about uh, some parts of uh, aspects of this metric state distillation. Uh, there are many performance measures, the space requirement if you are qubit limited, circuit depth and parallelizability for the uh, if, uh, fast uh, generation, and of course the total gate count that should be the most important. And if your T gate is very slow, then you should consider input to output ratio most importantly. And if your measurement is slow, then you should minimize the number of measurements. And you shouldn't move around your qubits too far and too often. So the circuit locality would be another important. And we probably we don't want to process on a too large batch. So all of these are important, but in this talk, I only barely covered two aspects. And we try to minimize those. Um, so this is the summary slide. Uh, so now we are seeing a zoo of distillation protocols, plural. And this is an important problem because it basically sets, your, sets the clock speed of your uh, quantum processor. Um, and we have investigated two approaches where first one is based on the uh, check-based. You, 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 you just check many times until you are satisfied. And for that purpose, basically any uh, weakly self dual CSS code can be used. And this family is very, very, very flexible. You can play around with the many combinations. And in, some, in, in a certain limit, you achieve the uh, input T count overhead to be a linear almost uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, up to a small correction. And many instances of this, uh, well, any instance using normal weakly self dual CSS code is actually gives rise to a, tri a single tri orthogonal code. Although I didn't tell you how to convert this, but uh, yeah. And so, th and thus, it, it was important to study the trial orthogonal code itself. And the simple observation is that you can puncture many times a trial orthogonal space. And uh, uh, some numerical experiment that revealed a very high rate code given the distance, uh, the best among, among all known so far. And we have, very, we have seen a very impractically important uh, example where the efficiency is sub-logarithmic. Um, and we have seen a trick to reduce the space uh, requirement at the cost of increasing the depth. Um, so I hope there should be other uh, discoveries. And I would like to conclude uh, with, a, with an advertisement that we are interested in hiring a good people. Uh, we have, oh, yeah. we have, uh, now there are two theory groups and, uh, and three experimental groups all the, uh, across the world. So it's, a, it's an exciting time for us to, to investigate the quantum world. Thanks. Any questions? Okay. Uh, uh, thanks, Zhang Hua. Um, the, uh, uh, some time ago, Chris Caesar and I showed that these generalized Reed-Muller codes are also valuable for distilling uh, other gates higher in the Clifford hierarchy, like square root of t, square root of square root of t, et cetera, uh, which could be useful. Others have shown, I think Earl Campbell and others, maybe Dan Brown also, showing that you can uh, combine that to do gate synthesis more quickly. Mm -hmm. Do you know if these techniques of puncturing are also applicable to these uh, other codes that are useful for distilling these other gates in, higher in the hierarchy? Yeah, <clears throat> immediately. Uh, whenever your triathlon space you, that you start with has uh, even higher symmetry, then puncturing those will immediately give you uh, useful instances for those in cases. In fact, uh, but it's more than triorthogonal. You're, you're interested in like quadruply even oh, yeah, yeah. codes yeah. and you know so right. on and so sure. forth. So there's analogous conditions, uh, but they're a little different. Right. So in this theorem, that there exists a triathlonal code of these parameters. Uh, this really doesn't depend on the uh, three here. If your M is tuned to, uh, say, nu times R plus one, then your code is uh, useful for the new uh, uh, level of Clifford hierarchy. Okay. Uh, but some, something funny is happening. Uh, even in the large R limit, 
uh, it was a numerical observation. If you, uh, if you go to level 11, then your scheme is more efficient. That namely that the single puncture is more efficient than, more efficient than many punctures. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, but below that, this is better. I see, okay, thank you. Any more questions? So I have one quick question while we're on this, this slide. This is a remarkable result to have such a low gamma. Do you, do you have any insights into what properties this code has which makes, makes it work so well for this? Uh, <coughs> uh, actually, we tried hard to prove the lower bound. Uh, um, uh, and the, yeah, it, it was observed in the random construction. Well, the, the intuition was like this. Your, your construction try orthogonal uh, matrix, matrices, and uh, essentially you, it is crucial to build just the trial one space. Uh, we, for the uh, uh, lower bound purpose, it doesn't seem to be that important to have to consider the logical operator part and just the uh, trial orthogonal space part. And um, there's a nonlinear constraint, and uh, uh, so and that nonlinear constraint can be explained by you wet two spaces, and that should be the ortho, in the that should be in the orthogonal complement of the original one. Um, and the wetting two spaces, I, we thought, would enlarge the space dimension quadratically, because it, there are you know roughly speaking quadratic number of uh, new rows. But reed Miller codes drastically violates that. Uh, reed Miller code of R comma three R plus one. Uh, there, the original space dimension is like 2 to the 0.9n, 0.9, yeah, the n is some parameter, and the, the wedge product of that is just 2 to the n. So it's the, the wedge of this one with itself is far smaller than its quadratic uh, uh, enlargement. Um, so probably that's the, well, that's one indication that this behaves differently. And we don't really understand why it works so well. Uh, I mean, <laughs> uh, and was this, I mean, was this the smallest gamma because this was pretty much as big as your numerics could go? Or did you try bigger codes and, and not find any improvement in gamma? Well, there's no numeric except for the last line. Yeah. Um, uh, Yeah, I don't, I don't have Do you expect to... larger codes would continue to see reduction in, in gamma? Or... I think so. I mean, uh, so look at this example. Um, already at around 1,000 qubits, uh, we're seeing numbers like, oops, blah, blah. Yeah, already around 1,000 qubits, the distance and the inverse rate is almost matching. Oh, and the, the gamma value is like a 0.16 or something. So probably around like a couple of thousand, there should be an L instance, I guess. But, oh, by the way, this is, this is almost random puncture. So we took a, a, a you know, a, 176 by 1024 matrix, and then we randomly chose columns and got Gauss eliminate and check the distance. And this is the result. And um, uh, yeah, I, 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 I am highly, highly confident that there's a, there is a much smaller instance. Maybe time for one quick question. Hi, thanks for the great talk. So when you puncture the Reed-Muller code, the distance of the thing you're left with is gonna depend on the distance of the thing in the dual, right? Yes. So when you puncture that, in the worst case scenario, the distance will drop by one each time you puncture. Mm -hmm. So is that worst case estimate quite far, quite far off or is it quite accurate? It's a lot far. It's a lot far off, so, okay. So the number of encoded qubits is the number of punctures, basically. Mm -hmm. And the, the distance of this one, the dual distance, was 16. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so it's now time for the coffee break. Let's thank John Wan again for an